Congressional Republicans cross another hurdle on the way to the finish line for that tax reform. Lawmakers releasing the final version of the GOP tax bill. They plan to muscle that measure on through Congress next week, and President Trump could sign it into law by Friday. Joining me now is Congressman Robert Pittenger of North Carolina, a member of the House Financial, uh, the House Committee on Financial Services. Congressman, thanks for being here. Hey, Molly, how are you? I'm doing great. Uh, let's kick off with this. I would say congratulations. I want to wait for the ink to hit the paper. I want to wait for it to be dry. Uh, but Republicans and the White House as well seem like they are just on the cusp of this big victory, this legislative win that they have wanted. Why should the American people be excited about this moving forward into the new year? It's transformational. I think most Americans really don't even know what to expect. Uh, you know, you've got to be in your 50s or 60s to really have a perspective of what took place during the Reagan tax cuts. So folks in their 20s and 30s and 40s, all they know probably is Keynesian theories of uh, government intervention. Uh, Market-driven economies and low taxes are what is really going to uh, catapult this uh, economy and create jobs. This is a jobs bill. Mm -hmm. It's going to put more cash back in the hands of the American people, but really it's going to put capital in the hands of businesses to be able to expand and create jobs. Well, let's talk about some of the concerns that have been raised. Really, the one big, big one that seems to have gathered so much attention is the deficit and the analysis that shows that a trillion or more could be added to the deficit. What do you say to that? Well, that's a static model. Well, that's a model that really doesn't uh, enjoin uh, growth. And this is a, a, a growth uh, tax cuts. And uh, for every 1% that you add to the GDP, uh, you will increase uh, the revenue back to the federal coffers by nearly $3 trillion. So uh, you can't just look at the silo of uh, tax cuts as they are. You have to see the reality of the growth that comes from that, new jobs, and frankly, as a result, uh, revenue back to the federal coffers for those tax receipts. And certainly people want to see those new jobs. You're excited about this bill. A lot of your colleagues are excited about the bill. Uh, but some of the recent polling shows that some might not be as excited. A Quinnipiac University national poll coming out December 13th. Only 16 percent of the American voters say the tax plan will reduce their taxes. 44 percent say it will increase their taxes. 65 percent say that the wealthy will benefit the most from the tax plan. So when it comes to messaging, those skeptics, when will they see the money in their pockets? When will the middle class feel the difference? Well, before the Reagan tax cuts in the polling, only 18 percent of the people felt that they were going to get a tax cut. And as I said a minute ago, uh, most folks really did never experience uh, those tax cuts that are here today. You've got to be in your 50s to be aware of what uh, materially happened uh, to their own paychecks and to jobs and to the increase uh, in wages. So I think uh, in the February, when people get their paychecks, they're going to start seeing something uh, different. Uh, they'll see money, uh, less money taken out of the paycheck. Well, by February, so that would be good news for a lot of folks. Uh, certainly, that would make a lot of people happy in that post-Christmas era. You know, and speaking of Christmas, I was at the Salvation Army uh, earlier this week, and I had a chance to speak with a lady there, an older lady, who had packed her tiny little car to the brim with toys, was bringing them in, and she was concerned about the charitable tax credit. What would you say to folks that, are, that have that concern here in this season of giving? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, they are continued. Uh, we continue our, our charitable deductions. In this bill, as we had the mortgage deductions up to $750,000 for two homes, we have uh, the deductions for health care, uh, for student uh, uh, education, for graduate education. Uh, we have many uh, deductions in there that have been preserved uh, for the American people. You know, you've also talked about, said, you know, you have to be in your 50s to understand and remember. And this is historic in the sense that we haven't seen changes like this, uh, as you mentioned, since the 80s, since the, since the Reagan era. Uh, when we're talking about families, po people that are not yet in their 50s, that are in their 20s and 30s and 40s and they're raising kids, we know that Marco Rubio kind of won that battle to get the tax credit. What else is in it for that era, for folks that are, that are worried about supporting their, their young, growing families right now? Sure. I mean, we doubled the standard deduction. Uh, and as you said, we increased the double tax credit to one to two thousand dollars. So that's that's real meaningful for them. But really, what's truly meaningful is the impact on growing this economy and on jobs. Uh, we will be able to, uh, as as companies expand, they've got more capital. I've, I've got businesses in my district. I have, I have eight counties. Uh, some of it's rural, uh, some of it's suburban. But these businesses are very 
encouraged that they're going to have more capital to be able to expand, and that's job creation. That impacts wages as well. So I think there's a, a, a major benefit that's going to come back to every American family. Congressman, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, Merry Christmas to you and Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. God bless you. <laughs> more violent clashes in the West.